by your terminology, laying your lives on the line. You've been accused of grandstanding to, to draw attention to an issue. I would say, though, that you have been successful as well. Sure, if you want to call it grandstanding... Uh, it perhaps, served its purpose. Perhaps to a certain extent it is. We're not, we're not uh, trying to become martyrs or heroes yeah. or anything. We're trying to, maybe as you say, grandstand. We're trying to point out the situation. That's all. And there's no doubt about it that when we place ourselves in, in these situations, between harpoons and whales or between sealers and seals. We are on actual expeditions out in the middle of the ocean or out on a nice flow 80 miles off the coast. And yeah. It is a dangerous situation, there's right. no doubt about that. But uh, as, far as, the, as far as making sure we get in front of the cameras goes, that could be called grandstanding, I suppose. But what's the use of doing something in a vacuum? Yeah, exactly. Our, the, the, the real strength of the Greenpeace organization is the fact that there is a media network in the world today that is capable of communicating what's going on yeah. to the mass of people. So that if we use the term grandstanding, it's grandstanding with a purpose. Sure. Which to achieve your end, when it is done coldly, calculatingly, to make people aware That's right. and, and make them pay attention to it. Tell me, <coughs> I have never asked this particular question in, in a Greenpeace interview because I felt it was such a basic question that I'd uh, get a pretty basic answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Certainly you've been fighting for the endangered species, but what about some of our species that are not endangered? Uh, you have nothing, I don't suppose you have anything against the management of a species that is in abundant supply. Well, that word is horribly misused, the word management. This is uh, a word that's applied to wild animals like seals as if they were being managed in the same way as a herd of cows mm -hmm. was or a herd of sheep. Well, let me ask you, what about our Pacific Coast fishery? Well, when it comes to the halibut, for example, they are endangered in a certain degree. The quotas have been lowered and lowered and lowered, and the fish size has gone down and down due to both our foreign fleets and our own fleets uh, overfishing the halibut. The salmon has gone down. There's no doubt about that. They've been overfished. The streams have been destroyed by logging and mining mm -hmm. and pulp mills and this sort of thing. Uh, and as well, the, the fishing fleets have been too large so that the fish have been overfished. I don't think you can find a resource on the planet today that's valuable that isn't being overused, overtaxed, whether, it, whether it's oil or whether it's forests or whether mm -hmm. it's food supply. Everything is being overtaxed because of the tremendous uh, demand that's being placed on it. Then what is the answer in a situation like this? Well, I feel myself that uh, it's a, a new ethic is required to, to our, our daily life. We have to change our consumption patterns. We have to stop thinking that there's some natural relationship between consumerism and happiness. That the more you eat and smoke and mm -hmm. chew and, and digest and drive and, and pollute and consume, that you're going to be happier. And this just isn't true as far as I have seen in my life. I see lots of people who aren't consuming very much who are perfectly happy. The other thing is uh, we simply have to uh, get, get the population of people in check, not necessarily in, in, in North America, where the problem is overconsumption more than it is overpopulation. But uh, the, what's happened in the last hundred years on, this, on the Earth as a, as a whole planet has been that mankind is very rapidly transforming all of the rest of life into people mm -hmm. by eating it all, basically. We're eating all of the, uh, all of the food that is here. And, thus undermining the very system that supports us. Yeah, so we're, we're overpopulating. Yes. Yes, it doesn't so the, project very well, I, I agree with you. Well, I don't, I don't think it projects very badly either. If you, uh, if you look at the fact that here we are uh, in 1977, and uh, we have already uh, done what appears to be a tremendous amount of damage. If you look mm -hmm. at the forests have been destroyed, the minerals have been mined, and giant piles of slag have been left behind, and half, uh, you know, whole continents have been <laughs> paved over already, yeah. and yet it's still going on. Yeah. And there is this voice for change, and there is a, an optimism, I think, in, in the future because of that. Okay. Let's bring it right up to date now, and we're getting close to taking a little break because we, there's something we want to have a look at. And we're going to show in a moment or two the a, a film. Tell, tell us about the film a little bit, Pat. Well, this film is the result of our own camera crew, their work in coming with the Greenpeace expedition to save the seals in Newfoundland 
last year. That was in March of 1976. And we, we set out on our first expedition to save the seals by train across Canada early last March and arrived in St. Anthony, Newfoundland, where we were unfortunately uh, greeted with a fairly hostile atmosphere mm -hmm. as a result of what I consider to be just that the, the government, both provincial and federal governments, riled the people up against us before we got there. And it took us a couple of days before we were able to settle in and develop a rapport with these people and make them realize that we were humans just like they were and that we weren't there to take food out of their mouths or to deprive them of anything in, in okay, particular. So, so this film is a report of last year's Save the Seals expedition. That's right. Well, let's have a look at it now and then we'll come back and talk a little more. Every February, off the east coast of Canada, some 200,000 harp seal pups are born. For three weeks, they live on the ice floes, unable to swim, capable only of crying to their mothers for food. Their transparent white fur is both a blessing and a curse. The same coat which absorbs energy directly from the sun is also a valuable commodity used to make luxurious fur coats boots, and souvenir toy seals. Annually, more than three quarters of the harp seal pups are slaughtered, primarily for their white pelts. Large commercial sealing fleets account for most of the killing, shipping the furs to Norway to provide affluent European women with stylish winter coats. As the harp seal approaches extinction, we must ask if the ecological cost of decimating a species isn't too high a price to pay for such a savage luxury. In March 1976, the Greenpeace Foundation sent volunteers to Newfoundland, concerned that the harp seal is threatened with extinction if the hunt continues. They intended to go to the ice floes to paint the seals with a green cross, making the furs worthless to the sealers, without harming the pups, who lose their white coats when they are four weeks old. Greenpeace was met with hostility and resentment from the townspeople of St. Anthony. I'd like to place a resolution before this meeting tonight that these people be given until tomorrow morning to place themselves back on their bus, remove themselves from St. Anthony and the province of Newfoundland. I'd like to ask the Greenpeace people, what about the adverse effect that all of this publicity and propaganda that they're creating is having on the markets for sealskin clothing, sealskin souvenirs? Doesn't this affect the landsmen as well as the people fishing in international waters? I just have one more comment. These people claim to come here to fight the Norwegians, to drive them away. If they want to fight the Norwegians, why the hell don't they go to Norway? to our feet, and I'm, and I'm 67 years of age, and I'll back, I'll back all you young people today, because we have suffered our life, and the world has suffered this country, by all means and all ways.